Good morning. Welcome to First Memorial. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please join me in the call to worship, which is printed in our bulletins. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me. And now we invite all of the children to come forward for the children's message. Okay, pop quiz about last week, what you learned in Sunday school. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. branches. Great job. And what does that mean? What does it mean that Jesus is the vine? He makes us so we have to believe in him. Believe in him? Okay, Aiden, what is it? The spiritual food from Jesus, right? Very good. So, by reading our Bibles and going to church, then we generate the Fruits of the Spirit. Do you remember, older kids, we went over the fruits of the Spirit, right? Hold on, I'm going to ask you in one second. All right, so just like the younger kids, right, they had, what did you guys do with the Play-Doh and with the, the paper? Do you remember? You made grapes, yeah, and you put those on the, what? On the branches, right? Yes, which are connected to the vine. Very good. So, Kayla, you raised your hand. Do you remember what the fruits of the Spirit are? Any of them? Yeah. Which one? Um, faithfulness and joy. Yes, faithfulness, joy. What else? Kindness. Kindness. You don't remember All any of them? Happen. What about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness hope. and self-control hope. hope hope is just next on the list how about that it's not on our list but it can be the next one so at the very end of class last week remember when we gathered all together all of us yeah when we had donuts yeah so i asked you guys what happens to the branch if it breaks away from the vine what happens yeah. It can't come back. It just dies. It dies, right? And the branch dries up and dies, and then that's the end of the branch, right? That's it. The but, branch is done. It's not connecting back to the vine, right? But, but we can. Yes, you just answered my question. So Actually, what makes us different than the branches? What hap Abby, what makes us different? So even if we stop believing, we can always go back to believing him. Right, exactly. So if something happens and maybe we stray away from God for a little bit, we can always reconnect to the vine, unlike a branch that once it's broken off, it's done, right? It's dead. It's dead, okay. yes. So Jesus, he knows that some things happen in life and maybe we might stray away for a little bit, but that's why he's so excited to welcome us back, right, with his love. So today, the adults... They're going to talk about someone who lost their connection to Jesus, to the vine, and then reconnects with Jesus, just like we talked about. So this man was blind. What does it mean to be blind? Do you know? What does it can't mean, Austin? can't see forever. You can't see, right. Forever. So have you ever not understood something? Have you ever been in school and didn't understand what the teacher was talking about? No. No. And then all of a sudden you understand and you're like, oh, I see. No, yeah. no that's yeah. never happened to you before, Morgan? Yeah. I find that a little hard to believe. Yeah, yeah your see-through moment, right. I, so, you understand. Well, this man, this blind man, he calls out to Jesus asking, what do you think he asks Jesus for? Glasses. Well, so glasses, kind of. To be able to see, yeah. To see the beautiful world. Right. And because he has faith that Jesus can heal him, He's able to see and he's able to understand. He has his breakthrough moment, his seeing moment, yes. And his branch 
attaches back to the vine of Jesus, right? right? So, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for letting us be branches on your vine that produced good fruit. We pray that we never let go of the vine, but if we do, we'll remember that you will always welcome us back. Help us to understand all that we learn in church and in Sunday school. Amen. Good morning. If, if you're wondering, uh, Pastor Allen is fine. It's just that with Ruth Swanson's memorial service this afternoon, he asked for some assistance this morning. In our call to confession, we're going to continue reading from Psalm 34 as we did in the call to worship. And let us now silently confess our sins to God. And as we do so, let us imagine that God is a friend sitting right next to us, listening with full attention because God is. Let us pray. And again, from Psalm 34, we read, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. And continuing further in Psalm 34, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. From Psalm 29 we read, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over mighty waters. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to the people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Without moving from where you now stand, please take the next few moments 
to share a warm greeting and a sign of God's, God's peace with those around you. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. And you can follow along in your pew Bibles in the New Testament on page 47. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. And many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he, began, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. So blind faith is the title that I chose for today's message. It is both a fitting title to the story that we just read from Mark, and it's also the name of a rock group from 1969. As Megan shared, last week in Sunday school, the children learned the lesson about Jesus as the vine and us as the branches, 
This passage can be found in chapter 15 in the book of John. In our reading today from Mark, this blind man wants to get connected to the vine, and he has faith that even though he is blind, Jesus can connect him. Now notice the reaction from the others who were with Jesus. Many, many sternly ordered him to be quiet. Boy, how often is that true today? If we were to call out, Son of David, have mercy on me, what kind of reaction do you think we would get from our friends, from our coworkers, from our family? Be quiet would probably be the nicest thing we'd hear. But the blind man cried out only louder, good for him, that is faith. Now the rock group blind faith has some interesting lyrics that we can look at that tie in with today's message. Now this band, if you don't know, included Steve Winwood, who you may know better from the band Traffic or from his solo work. It also included Eric Clapton, who many of you know from several rock groups and his solo career. Steve Winwood wrote the lyrics to Blind Faith's most famous song, Can't Find My Way Home. The lyrics include the lines, I'm wasted and I can't find my way home, and I've done nothing wrong, but I can't find my way home. And that line, I can't find my way home, is repeated several times to end the song. Now, that's kind of sad, but how often in our lives have we felt lost and disconnected from God? At those times, we feel spiritually blind. The second best known Blind Faith song was written by Eric Clapton. This song is titled Presence of the Lord. It includes the lyrics, everybody knows the secret. Everybody knows the score. I have finally found a way to live in the presence of the Lord. This also has a lot of truth to it. It is not a secret that we can lead fuller happier lives in the presence of the Lord. And yet, we still have a few empty seats here in our sanctuary. So why don't more people want to be connected to the vine? Now, there are times when we feel blind, but it turns out we just have our eyes closed. Often, these times are when life is at its most challenging, and we feel alone. There is a well-known poem, Footprints in the Sand, I think it was my mom's favorite. And this best explains what is really happening during those times. Here's the poem. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times there were one set of footprints. And this bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could only see one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, You promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I've noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there have only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? And the Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints is when I carried you. During the tough times, it is difficult to notice our connection to the vine. So we must try to remember that these are the times that Jesus carries us. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I learned some interesting tidbits doing my homework for today's lesson. One is that this is the first reference to Jesus as son of David in the book of Mark. This is saying that the blind man has faith that Jesus is in fact the Messiah at a time when not everybody saw that. And he says these words twice while calling out to Jesus. And Jesus asked the man, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man replies, my teacher, let me see again. The word used for teacher is Rabboni. And we usually think of Rabboni in reference to Mary at the tomb after she recognizes that Jesus is still alive. 
I've read these words in Mark several times during my life. One other item I always glossed over was that the blind man was named Bartimaeus, meaning son of Timaeus. And there are several references to Jesus healing the blind in the Gospels, but this is the only reference with a name. And it's also interesting that Luke, who references this same story, excludes the name. As Mark was the first gospel written, and supposedly Matthew and Luke had access to Mark's writings, why did Luke omit the name? Luke, Luke also omitted using Rabboni, but this makes more sense since he likely was not a Jew, Luke that is, and he was not directing his writings to the Jews. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. Does it matter that Mark gives him a name? I have no conclusion to draw regarding that question, but here's some interesting information that might give you something to think about. Timaeus is also the name of one of Plato's dialogues, and it's the name of the narrator. And Mark may very well have been familiar with Plato's Timaeus. In Plato's writings, Timaeus compares the physical world and the eternal world. The physical world will change and perish. The eternal never changes. And Plato sees, in quotes, in the physical world, but he's blind into the eternal. Now, biblical scholars give two different derivations to the name Bartimaeus. In Greek, Timaeus, a slightly different spelling, means honorable. So this yields son of honor. Others, as in our translation, see the Aramaic or Hebrew word for unclean. Our translation said blind beggar. Now, I'm not a biblical scholar. So I draw the same conclusion that I'd come to when my mom would ask, which piece of cake do you want, this one or this one? And I was enough of a smart aleck to say both. It never worked, and I should feel lucky that I still got one piece. But when it comes to the meaning of Bartimaeus, I'm going with both. And I don't conclude this in order to be a smart aleck, but I think it makes sense. From unclean to honorable covers a wide spectrum of people, and all kinds of people find themselves spiritually blind. Many want to be reconnected to Jesus the vine. For some reason, though, they don't notice Jesus walking by to ask him to restore their sight. But Jesus is available to us if only we look. The story of Bartimaeus can be the story of any of us. We might have to get loud and be persistent, but Jesus is willing to restore our sight. So what about my story? Well, I believe that we are all born blind, spiritually that is. And sure, God loves us, and there's lots of good flowing into us. But my first spoken word was not Jesus. Now, my mom was more of a churchgoer than my dad, and her dad was a minister. But it was interesting, given that there are seven days in the week, how tired that my, me and my brothers always were on Sunday mornings. But yet our mom managed to drag us to church fairly often. Now for me, Sunday school was okay, though I really did not know anyone that well. We did not go to the Presbyterian Church in our hometown of Hillsboro. I think my mom preferred the larger church in Bound Brook. And interestingly, had we gone to the Hillsboro Church, I would have known a few people from elementary school, and I would have met Karen a few years earlier since her family went to the Hillsboro Church. We did not really meet until high school. And her father was also a Sunday school teacher, so that could have been very interesting. Anyway, the key is I was still, at that point, spiritually blind. And during, high, during junior high and high school, when we'd be in regular church more as opposed to Sunday school, I did begin to appreciate the music and other parts of the service, except the boring sermon. And ironically, as an adult, I'm generally most interested in the sermon. Now, into adulthood, 
I'd go to various churches at times, but nothing regular. I most enjoyed seeing my grandfather, who at this point was retired from the ministry, but he still filled in at various places. And if he was reasonably close by, I'd try to go, but usually it was a pretty far drive, though, so I, this was still not a regular thing. Still blind. The shock to my system was when my son died. And as most of you know, he was a special needs child. And when he died, I was panicked to know if he was okay. My lack of faith was smacking me in the face. And I know a lot of you know the story, but for those that don't, I had an aunt who lived about 30 minutes away who had some special gifts. I called the family the day my son died, and my aunt showed up the next day unexpectedly. And skipping the details, she shared a letter that she was compelled to write that stated that Mark was okay. She did not know at that time who wrote the letter through her. And this brought minor relief to me, as that was my main concern, his being okay. But as she left, I declared, this is helpful, but I need to be hit over the head. My aunt realized later that day that it was my son communicating to her. And the next day, he took her shopping, a picture frame with a heart-shaped cutout for the picture and the words, don't forget, I love you. But the frame was pink, so my aunt questioned it. I know it's for my mom, was the reply from Mark. And then a gift for me, a laminated card with a music box containing Laura's theme from Dr. Zhivago. Someday we'll meet again, my love. Oh, Mark, my aunt said, that's for my dad. Bam, hit over the head, just as I'd asked. Still blurry, but I'm beginning to see. Mark was okay, that mattered most. So this led to more introspection and much more interest in study of spiritual matters. After reconnecting with Karen and getting married, we came to this church and the Morristown church. The eyes could see better, though that might be the new prescription lenses. Step by step, kerygma, Bible study, independent reading, Sunday services. Call me Bartimaeus. I still have much to learn, and anyone who says they don't is fooling themselves. I've learned that it is much better to have spiritual sight than to let myself be blind, even though it is a lot of work. And it can be emotionally draining as I come to care more about others, but it is worth it. I also invite you to share your story with others. There are a number of people here, including me, who will gladly listen. Depending on where you are on your journey, if you still feel blind, be like Bartimaeus. Call out to Jesus. And if people tell you to be quiet, cry out louder. Jesus will hear you. Jesus will call you. If you have faith, Jesus will open your eyes. Amen.
We are grateful to have you with us as we worship together on this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. And we hope you will be stewardship partners with us in our ministry here and around the world as you have been partners with us in our worship, whether here in our sanctuary or somewhere safe and convenient to you on your computer. And if you worshiped with us on your computer and are able and willing, please consider mailing an offering to our church this week at 51 West Blackwell Street in Dover. From first chapter of Peter, or first Peter chapter four, we read, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. And let us now offer ourselves and our gifts to God. abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you never failed and you won't start now and I will call upon your above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine oh and you are mine Without borders, 
Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Good morning. I want to thank everyone for their generous donations for the coat drive. We received 135 coats, and they were taken down to Mars Street Mission last week, and they will be part of the Coats on the Green, and I believe that's like next Saturday. This week at the church, birthdays, Lisa Berg, Joyce Szymanski, Andrew Galoza, Max Hockenhauser, Hock Heather Bryant, Aria Quinones. Today, Church of Limb meets here from 1 to 5. And a reminder that the memorial service for our Ruth Swanson will be held at 5.30 this afternoon in the sanctuary. This week, AA meets on Monday and Wednesday at noon and 8 p.m., and also Saturday at noon. Bible study is Tuesday at noon. Wednesday's the food pantry. Church of Limb also meets on Tuesday and Friday from 7 to 9.30. We are holding a movie night on November 9th at 6 p.m. It's $10 per adult. Popcorn and pizza is included. The movie is Love Actually. And just to let everyone know, it is an R-rated film. November 17th is the deadline for our shoebox donations. This is always a very interesting event when we have the children pack the boxes with items of washcloths, soap, toothbrushes, manicure kit, brushes, combs, socks, underwear, any type of uh, small gifts that the kids can play with, from dolls to matchboxes to crafts, crayons, pencils, coloring books. So please drop these items off at the church by November 17th so we can pack the boxes and get them shipped out of here uh, they go all over the world as part of Operation Christmas Child. Thank you. So your homework assignment is to uh, check out the lyrics to the offertory. The song is called Oceans, and read the lyrics, and you'll see why Rachel chose that for this morning. Dr. Albert Schweitzer in his book, Civilization and Ethics, writes, Reverence for life does not allow me to appropriate my own happiness. At moments when I should like to enjoy myself without a care, it brings before me thoughts of the misery I have seen and surmised. It refuses to allow me to banish my uneasiness. An uncomfortable doctrine prompts me in whispered words, You are happy, it says. 
Therefore, you are called to give up much. Whatever you have received more than others in health, in talents, in ability, in success, in pleasant childhood, in harmonious conditions of home life, all this you must not take to yourself as a matter of course. You must pay a price for it. You must render in return an unusually great sacrifice of your life for other life. Open your eyes and look for some man or some work for the sake of men, which needs a little time, a little friendship, a little sympathy, a little sociability, a little human toil. Perhaps it is a lonely person, or an embittered person, or an invalid or some unfortunate inefficient to whom you can be something. That is some food for thought as we count our blessings. And join me now in sharing the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And today, let's focus on the words we just spoke together, our Father. Our Father is the vine from whom we receive our nourishment. And as we meditate on this, it will help open our eyes to understanding. Now, a brief background on today's closing hymn. I won't go into details, as many of you likely know the story, but the writer of the hymn, John Newton, was a sinner. He also had a couple of close brushes with death. The good news is he repented and asked to be reconnected to the vine, which led him to write words like, was blind, but now I see. So let us now all stand and sing Amazing Grace.
Now, I'm not much of a poet, though some of you may not know it, but Elizabeth Barrett Browning was, and this is from her poem, Reward of Service. Thy love shall chant its own beatitudes after its own life working. A child's kiss set on thy singing lips shall make thee glad. A poor man served by thee shall make thee rich. A sick man helped by thee shall make thee strong. Thou shalt be served thyself by every sense of service which thou renderest. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And all God's children say, Amen. Please be seated for the postlude. <laughs> 